Truckers asleep at the wheel, 40 tons at 70 miles an hour. It's a deadly equation. It's a very, very violent way to die. We treat them like isolated accidents. And I don't have my best friend anymore. But these crashes are not accidents. It could have been avoided. The only way to get them down. And they are not isolated. It is shame on us because we don't notice when it's one or two or three killed. We do have three fatalities on scene at this time. One cause, a common and deadly health problem. There is an epidemic among truck drivers of sleep apnea. One solution, a company leading the way. Safety indeed does pay. But Washington politics has slowed progress. Regulators have been very slow to act. The News Channel 36i team exposes a largely unknown cause of truckers asleep at the wheel. Thanks for joining us, I'm Dave Wagner. We're here along Interstate 85, just west of Charlotte. Truck wrecks kill 10 people every day in this country, and fatigue plays a big role in those deaths. Over the next half hour, we're gonna take a fresh look at an old issue, drowsy driving. We'll focus on the health problem that can cause truckers to fall asleep at the wheel, and we'll explore a solution, but we'll also show you who's holding it up and why. We start with a woman from Charlotte who came to us asking for help. She wanted us to investigate a terrible crash that killed her husband. She thinks it's a national story. And after five months of investigation, we found out she's right. Here's the I-Team, Stuart Watson. Sean Johnson lived in Charlotte, but he was born in Orangeburg, loved orange soda, and drove a big orange truck. And that's where he died. I just want Sean's story to be told. Sean loved his eight kids. He was in love with his wife, Dana. From the road, he called her all the time. At night when I go to bed, he wouldn't get off the phone. He would say, just go to sleep. I'm going to listen to you sleep. And I'll fall off to sleep, and I'll wake up the next morning and pick up the phone and say, hello, good morning, sunshine. Saturday, July 30th, Dana Johnson got a very different phone call. It was the coroner. And he said, well, ma'am, and as he said, ma'am, I said, no, don't tell me that. Another trucker southbound on 85 near Anderson, South Carolina, ran off the road, jerked the wheel, jackknifed, took out a pickup and an SUV, dragged them across the median into oncoming traffic, went airborne, and hit Sean head on. He died on impact. The impact knocked the cab clean off the chassis. This is one of the worst wrecks I've seen in 24 years in the fire service. The trucker died, and he killed a third man, a young lawyer who practiced in Lincolnton, who'd been towing his boat to the lake. A couple trapped in their SUV under the trailer survived. And it could have been avoided. Witnesses told troopers the trucker was weaving. He looked sleepy. And when the coroner called the trucker's wife to notify her, she told him something. He looked like he had a sleep apnea problem, and according to his wife, uh, he had been having that problem here for the past couple of years. Sleep apnea is a medical condition. The back of the throat closes during sleep, cutting off breathing, interrupting deep sleep, and causing fatigue. Oh, and for a driver steering 30 tons at 65 miles an hour, that fatigue was deadly. Why wasn't it monitored better than it was? One study estimates more than one in four truckers has sleep apnea, most of them undiagnosed, and many who have been diagnosed are untreated. My first thought is, why was he allowed to drive? Why was he allowed to drive? After months of reporting, the ITN found Dana is hardly the first grieving family member to ask that pointed question. I just don't think people realize how dangerous it is. Like Dana, Wanda Lindsay married her best friend and lost that best friend to a trucker with sleep apnea. He was who I wanted to call when I was sad or happy or sick or mad. He was the first person that I wanted to talk to. And I don't have my best friend anymore. Wanda and her husband John were driving to see their grandchild when they stopped in a construction zone in Texarkana. An 18-wheeler at 65 miles an hour hit them from behind. Yes, we got a major wreck out here on the interstate at the Nash exit. John hung on for three days. But on Sunday morning, on, on Mother's Day, the uh, doctor that had been taking care of him uh, came in and told me that there was no further brain activity and that there was just no chance that he could ever be the man that we knew before. And he needed our permission to... Uh, didn't disconnect the machines. 
Oh, I've got lots of emails. Wanda poured her grief into forming the John Lindsay Foundation and a website, sleepapneakills.org, devoted to lobbying lawmakers to require truckers to be screened for sleep apnea. If I can keep one mother from having to watch her children stand at the bedside of their father and tell him to wake up, please wake up. If I can spare one mother from doing that, then that's what we'll do. Wanda also sued the trucking company Celadon, and last month the company settled, acknowledging that sleep apnea caused the crash and promising to train its truckers about the dangers of sleep apnea and to encourage them to seek treatment. There is an epidemic among uh, truck drivers uh, of sleep apnea. A silent epidemic. After Wanda's story, one viewer, Daisy May, wrote, it's just a freak accident, mourn and move on. But the I-Team has found these are not freak accidents. First, because they're not accidents, they're preventable. And second, because they're not isolated. They happen all the time. Congress and the DOT have known about the problem of sleep apnea for years. A three-year-old GAO report names two accidents, one that killed a Kansas mother and her son in a fireball, another killed a Tennessee state trooper in a construction zone. Since that report, a trucker with sleep apnea killed 10 people in Miami, Oklahoma, rolling over one car after another. Relatives recovered more than $60 million in lawsuits. Prosecutors jailed the driver, Donald Creed, for 30 days. Mr. Creed. You may not remember the Miami, Oklahoma crash because the accident that took the lives of 10 people got 10 seconds on one network. When a tractor trailer slammed into cars that had stopped on a highway. Television news, our medium, does cover the issues of fatigue and transportation. It's just usually air transportation. The controller, an FAA supervisor on duty, was asleep. Remember the reports in March of the air traffic controllers who fell asleep on the job? You should. The controller was asleep. Asleep on the Fast job. Asleep. We analyzed network news coverage through a database at the Vanderbilt University Television News Archive. And guess what? In just three weeks, the television networks devoted more airtime to a handful of air traffic controllers than they have to the issue of sleep apnea over the course of 30 years. And while the issues of air traffic controllers asleep on the job is certainly a serious one, in this case, no one died, no one crashed, no one was even injured. Now the passengers on the two flights Wednesday were in no passengers real danger. were never in any danger. And you know what? It is shame on us because we don't notice when it's one or two or three killed like we notice if it's a whole airplane full of people. But let me tell you, if it's your loved one, it doesn't make any difference to you. They're still gone and your life will never be the same. Miami, Oklahoma. The same I was unable to stop. Texarkana, Texas. It was just like somebody ripped out half of my heart. Anderson, South Carolina. All the money in the world can't give a life back. Like seat belts and drunk driving, Progress is being made in sleep apnea, but people like Sean Johnson are dying while we wait. There is a solution, and at least one trucking company is already using it. It makes a big, big difference in being alert, you know, not being tired. So why are more truckers getting help, and who's holding up real reform? We'll answer those questions when a sleep at the wheel returns. But first, what causes the most deadly accidents? Drunk driving, drowsy driving, or distracted driving? The numbers when we come back. You've heard over and over, don't drink and drive, don't text and drive. But have you ever heard, don't be drowsy and drive? Before the break, we asked you what causes the most deaths? Driving drunk, drowsy, or distracted? The answer, drunk driving, at 10,500 deaths annually. But number two is drowsy driving which costs 7,500 lives each year. That's more than distracted driving. You might think if you're diagnosed with sleep apnea and you're a trucker, that might be the end of your career. At one company, that's not the case. They're not just testing their drivers, they're treating them as well. Here's the I-Team, Stuart Watson. You might pass Steve Creighton on I-85, driving an 18-wheeler through Charlotte. No need to worry, Steve's driven millions of miles accident-free, but a few years back, the doctor told him he had sleep apnea. And I didn't know no difference. I just thought, well, I was supposed to sleep, you know. Truckers have to get a medical certificate every two years as part of their CDL, a commercial driver's license. Their jobs depend on it, so they're wary of getting tested for sleep apnea. And I thought, oh boy, here we go again. So anyway, they... Um, what were you worried about? 
Oh, well, I was just worried that it might cost me my job. But Steve's employer, Schneider National Trucking, didn't fire him, quite the opposite. They paid for his sleep test and his treatment. Schneider went to our health care provider and they worked out a deal with them where it would be no out-of-cost expenses. Most doctors treat sleep apnea with a machine called a CPAP, short for continuous positive air pressure, pumped through a mask into the nose and mouth. It makes a big, big difference in being alert, you know, not being tired. Steve keeps the CPAP next to his bunk in the back of his rig. Now he never goes anywhere without it. Calls it his sleep machine. I got remarried and when we went on our cruise, I took my sleep machine right with me. Schneider National led the nation in screening and treating every one of its drivers with sleep apnea, more than 2,000 of them in all. This is a condition that can be very effectively treated. I wanted to meet Don Osterberg, Schneider's VP of Safety, so I flew to Green Bay, Wisconsin to the company headquarters. Here's the bottom line, the way I think about that. Safety indeed does pay. Because the results paid off in ways Osterberg did not expect. They have more energy, they tend to be more active. As a result of being more active, they lose weight. Serious accidents drop by almost a third. The driver's health improved measurably. And in a business where drivers often quit and jump ship, employee retention improved. It was really a win-win-win. Healthcare cost, safety, as well as fleet retention. Victims applauded Osterberg, gave him awards, but they wanted to know one thing. So if they can do it, why can't the other trucking companies do it? To be fair, many large trucking companies are now treating their drivers for sleep apnea. But small operators, the mom and pops that make up the vast majority of truckers, worry about the price tag. This is uh, somewhat uh, a nomadic industry, and, and oftentimes they don't have health care insurance uh, in order to defray the cost of testing and so on. Those drivers may never get tested or treated unless push comes to shove from the DOT. The agency has been slow to act. A panel of medical advisors urged the DOT to require screening for sleep apnea in early 2008. So now we're uh, three and a half years later and the DOT still has not taken action. So exactly how many truck crashes come as a result of sleep apnea? Coming up, why that question has the trucking industry so fired up. That's an absolute crock. That and more when a sleep at the wheel continues. But first, you can watch more video to find out how the CPAP mask works and why it might be worth it for you to take a sleep test. You can see that story on the iTeam section of our website, WCNC.com. In October, a truck accident on I-85 in Gaston County killed the trucker and shut down this major artery for most of the day. Now we know one of the trucks was driving just 30 miles an hour at 1.30 in the morning. Could the driver have been sleeping? The DA is still looking into the case. You can see how it's difficult to nail down hard numbers when it comes to fatigue. The trucking industry and safety advocates can't even agree on the number of highway deaths caused by drowsy driving. That's because troopers and police often overlook fatigue when reporting fatal crashes. Again, here's Stuart Watson. The I-Team began with the July 30th crash on I-85 near Anderson, South Carolina that killed three people, the trucker and two other drivers, including Sean Johnson of Charlotte. We do have three fatalities. A tractor trailer jackknifed, smashed two cars, and flew into opposing traffic, hitting another truck. Witnesses said the driver looked sleepy. To me, it just like, looked like he was having trouble staying awake. The coroner said he had sleep apnea. He looked like he had a sleep apnea problem. And the highway patrol said he had sleep apnea. He had some sleep anapnea, or that's the right way to pronounce it. But the one report that mattered makes no mention of sleep apnea. It's the South Carolina Traffic Collision Report. Take a look. Under contributing factors, it says the primary factor is code number 18. That's improper lane usage. What's significant about this report is what it leaves out. There's no mention of fatigue. Absent the commercial driver acknowledging that he or she fell asleep, law enforcement doesn't record the crash as fatigue related. That's the problem in trying to get good hard numbers on fatigue related crashes. Very rarely will you hear a truck driver say this. I just fell asleep and I woke up and it was too late. It was too late. But without such a statement, accident investigators blame fatigue in only 1.4% of fatal tractor-trailer crashes. Instead, they listed improper lane change almost five times as much, 
just like they did in the July 30th crash. I would argue that fatigue as a causal factor in truck-involved crashes is underreported, not overreported. The DOT's large truck crash causation study puts fatigue as a factor in 13% of big rig crashes. That's almost 10 times the rate on accident reports. But as truckers fight tougher rules, they repeatedly cite the small number. 1.4%. Todd Spencer represents 150,000 independent truckers who own their own rigs. I told him about the South Carolina crash. He says the evidence of sleep apnea doesn't prove a thing. The fact that a wife said sleep apnea could be a factor, I mean, that's not a determination. And, I would and he appeared sleepy. He, well, well, how does somebody appear when they're Running sleeping? off the road. I mean, but there are lots of reasons that can happen. Like, I mean, well, well, there like was no maybe, blood alcohol. Maybe you, spilled, maybe you spilled your coffee. Maybe you dropped something. Except witnesses told troopers the driver ran off the road repeatedly for miles. Doesn't sound like spilled coffee. Even so, you'll never convince many truckers. The owner-operators Independent Drivers Association sent me a statement saying no cases of sleep apnea have ever been directly linked to any trucking highway deaths. It's because they haven't looked. There is a, the body of knowledge that's out there is pretty robust at this point. Don Osterberg of Schneider National Trucking says for the independent drivers to deny any sleep apnea deaths amounts to disinformation. Are you spinning this? Those are the numbers from the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration after accident analysis that actually took place out there on the road. Are we spinning it? That's an absolute, that's an absolute line, that's an absolute crock. Why are many truckers so opposed to a requirement that they take a sleep test to be screened for sleep apnea? I think it's mind their own damn business. It's about the money and their jobs. More on that as our special report, Asleep at the Wheel, continues in a moment. We're back with Asleep at the Wheel, a special presentation from the News Channel 36i team. Almost 4,000 people die every year in large truck crashes. That's a fact. What's a little harder to define is how well truck safety rules are working and how much more we're willing to pay to make them tougher. Here again, Stuart Watson. At a truck stop on Sunset Road in Charlotte, I met Steve Hall, just one of hundreds of thousands of truckers who owns his own rig. This is my business. That means Steve pays his own health insurance premium, all of it. About a thousand a month for me. So you can just guess what Steve thinks about proposals that truckers at risk of sleep apnea get a two to three thousand dollar sleep test. When I think about it, I think it's mind their own damn business. You got too many regulations out here on us and they keep dreaming up more. The guys are doing it's never been even been in a truck. Anytime somebody gets hurt on a road or dies, it's sad, real sad. But it's going to happen. You cannot pass enough regulations to stop it from happening. People are going to die on the highway. Steve's a lifetime member of OIDA, the Owner Operators Independent Drivers Association. They have friends in Congress who are fighting new safety rules. What we have is a bunch of eggheads telling us that if we do some stupid formula, that we're going to have a little bit more, more safety. You saw me swear from the testimony you're about to give. The owner operators spent almost a million dollars last year lobbying regulators and the Congress. Unfortunately, a lot of members of Congress are beholden to them. Jennifer Tierney from Greensboro has pushed for truck safety for decades. I am a volunteer for the Truck Safety Coalition. My dad was killed. Her father rounded a curve and hit a trailer which had backed across the road with no lights and no reflectors. I think they are a big, powerful industry that has bullied their way through Congress. But federal regulators under the Obama administration have shown more willingness to address fatigue. And I was introduced as the truck and bus lady. That's certainly what I do. Ann Farrow, the boss of the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, which sponsored this conference in Baltimore on sleep apnea, is keenly aware of the tension between money and safety. In most cases, the entities that are operating in these modes are driven to make money. And when you're driven to serve a customer, you're going to compete with the demands of your workers who, are, who must get proper rest. But people like Jennifer Tierney, who've lost family members, have limited patience for this talk of money. It's time that they suck it up and do the right thing and sit down and look at this from another perspective besides the bottom line, which has been the almighty dollar for them. Truck safety advocates have maintained a presence in Washington, 
Only last week, Wanda Lindsay, who lost her husband John to a trucker with sleep apnea, delivered her personal message to a DOT safety advisory committee. This is not a political issue. I do not understand why the trucking companies don't want to do something that would be for the benefit of their drivers. Let's not walk out of here and let someone else die. How many more people have to die? How many more families have to be torn apart before we do something? So please, please do something. So is anyone doing anything about this? Well, I can tell you I attended those safety advisory committee hearings in Washington where you heard Wanda Lindsay speak to them, and they are recommending specific guidelines to the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration to screen truck and bus drivers for sleep apnea, Dave. And so what are those guidelines, Stuart? Well, they're based on obesity. It's that any truck or bus driver with a body mass index over 35, that's severely obese, be at least screened for sleep apnea. What does obesity have to do with sleep apnea? There's a strong correlation, but it's a lot like smoking and lung cancer. That means that not everyone with a body mass index over 35 has sleep apnea, and not everyone who has sleep apnea is, is overweight. All right. Stuart Watson, thanks very much. And if you missed any of these stories at all or want to share them with others, you can find this entire show on the iTeam section of our website, WCNC.com. For Stuart Watson and all of us here at News Channel 36, thanks for joining us.